Hey YouTube world, what's going on? Mark here from TST Industries, back in the garage with another installation video. And as you can see in front of me, we have a wide range of Womatech crash protection products. And behind me, we have the all new 2022 Yamaha XSR 900. And in this installation video, we will be showing you the installation of the Womatech Evos frame sliders. And I do wanna mention the installation process for each of these products is exactly the same as the third generation 2021 Yamaha MT-09. So the method we will show, it will actually be shown on the MT-09. However, for the outro, we will come and actually show you the finished product installed on this beautiful redesigned XSR 900 to give you the confidence in knowing we did actually do the work and install these parts on this bike. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin the installation process. So to begin, we're gonna do a quick unboxing. I'm not going to break this down any more than it needs to be. However, it is important to note that these are side specific and the parts are different. So to begin, we do have these two larger brackets and they are different in size and shape. The straighter one will be on the left side of the bike. The one that has a, uh, has a harsher cut into it will be on the right side, the side that we will be working on to start this installation process. Then we have the pucks. Luckily, these frame slider pucks are not side specific. They're not side specific. They both look exactly the same and they mount on the backside of the pucks. The bolts will uh, insert through the backside of the bracket as well. They are countersunk, they will sit flush. We have two pucks. Moving on from there, we do have two new brackets that will be replacing both of the rear engine mount brackets that secure the engine to the frame. The larger one will sit on the left side of the bike. The smaller one will sit on the right side of the bike. And if you put them next to each other, you will see that they line up perfectly. Then we have some spacers. The two smallest ones, which is this smaller tapered one, and this three-step one that's a little bit larger. These will be for the right side of the bike. The smaller one will insert on the front bolt. This larger one will insert on one of the back bolts. And then the two larger spacers that remain will be used on the left side of the bike. We have some hardware here, as I mentioned, the countersunk bolts. These secure the pucks to the brackets. You have two bolts of the equal size wrapped together. These are going to be used on the right side of the bike. And then the two bolts that were wrapped together and they are different sizes, they will be used on the left side of the bike. We have a pack of four bolts here, two for the left, two for the right. And lastly, we have two bolts packaged together. One is going to be used on each side. Other than that, we got some stickers and that is it. This box is empty. We can actually begin the installation process. However, before I dive in, it is important to note, we have this bike standing completely vertical, centered off on, a on the lift here. If we did not have a lift, we would have it on a rear stand. Do not perform this installation with the bike on its kickstand. Once you remove one of the engine bolts, there is potential that your engine can droop. There is potential with it like this. If I were to remove all the bolts or if I just take my time, if I were to remove one of the front bolts and go out for a beer and dinner, I could come back and the engine might have drooped a few millimeters or centimeters. That is crucial in the installation process of these frame sliders. You do not want to cross thread. You do not want to uh, force bolts in. So when you're doing this installation, make sure the bike is vertical, not on the kickstand. And please make sure you're only removing one bolt at a time as you do this installation. If you're gonna remove the front one, do that one first, replace it, and then you can work on the rear bracket system. I think I'm done talking, let's get to wrenching. To begin this installation process, I will be starting on the right side of the bike, and we will begin by using a hex key or Allen key, a six millimeter one, and removing this rear facing bracket. Now it's important to note that these are all tightened from the manufacturer, torqued down, and some of them may even have Loctite. So please keep that in mind as you're removing some of these components. 
As you're removing these components, some of them may feel tighter than others. And when you're reinserting the new hardware, some of the components may feel harder than others. It's normal, don't be alarmed. Now we're gonna switch to our socket. This is a 14 millimeter socket. We're gonna put that on our tool and break this main engine bolt loose. And that's going to remove this bracket, freeing it from the frame and the motor. And we can push this aside. None of this hardware will be reused. So we can toss that to the side. Now we're going to grab our new bracket, which is the smaller one. As you can see, I superimposed it over and everything lines up perfectly as intended. If this was on the kickstand, it'd be a different story. We're going to grab two of these smaller bolts that were in that package of the four. Those would be the exterior ones. And then in the package that had two bolts that were split, we're going to use the larger M10 bolt in the center. This is only for the frame to the bracket to the motor. The frame slider bracket will actually mount to this bracket. So let's go ahead one by one. And again, we're gonna superimpose this over. We're gonna start, let me actually use this instead. We're going to start using a hand tool and gently, slowly and carefully inserting the bolts. We're not going to bottom anything out and we're not going to torque anything down just yet. This is just to get the bracket in place. Make sure that everything fits as it should. For one of the larger bolts, you will need to switch to an eight millimeter hex key or Allen key. Keep that in mind. Now that the bolts are in, we can bottom them out by hand. All right, now we do need to torque these down. So we're gonna grab our torque wrench and these smaller bolts will be tightened down to 25 Newton meters. The larger one in the center will be tightened down to 45. And that is the manufacturer recommended torque specification, so please keep that in mind. And again, this center one, the M10 bolt, this will be tightened down to 45 Newton meters. So right now, I haven't readjusted my torque wrench. I'm simply trying to insert this bolt until I feel it bottom out and then I will readjust. All right. Now we're gonna go to 45 Newton meters. That one is all tightened down, good to go. We can push our tool aside. Now, we will take the two countersunk bolts that were included in the pack of four. And we will grab our bracket and the frame slider puck. We will align it in the correct orientation. You can kind of see the cutout. And if you line this up and you look on the back side, you will see that the holes align perfectly. So just by hand, insert these. This is going from aluminum into Delrin. So you just really want to tighten it down. If you need torque specs, maybe eight foot pounds, 10 foot pounds. I kind of just bottom it out, bottom them out until they feel nice and snug because Delrin is a soft material. This is a five size five hex key, Allen key. But because this is a softer material, you can potentially over tighten it and damage the threads or the puck, and then you'll need to buy a new one. So I would say eight to 10 foot pounds, or just until it feels nice and snug. Good to go. You can see on the back surface, the countersunk bolts have bottomed out and they're sitting flush. I'm pretty happy with that. Now we are going to take in the pack of two bolts that were the same size, we're going to take those out of the packaging, take the longer of the two collars that sit on the right side, grab your bracket, superimpose it on the rear mount, feed the bolt through, 
and then you can grab your tool and just hand thread it in a few threads and then you can just let it hang. Now we're going to focus on removing this front bolt. Again, this is an eight millimeter head hex key or Allen key. So we're going to go ahead and break that bolt loose. Now this is the front engine bolt. This is a crucial component. You don't want to lose this assembly. It's important to note that as you remove this bolt, there's a washer with this bolt that sits on top. And then there's this lovely collet adapter that if you are not capable, uh, if you're not careful, this is a tapered collet adapter that sits inside there. There's a accepting feature that makes sure everything gets cushioned real nice and tight, creating tension preload and resistance. But you need to reuse this collet adapter. Please, please, please keep in mind, if you do not reuse this, things may sit off. So we're going to go ahead and push that in, make sure it's good. Put that washer over it as well. Now we're going to go ahead and take our smaller of the two tapered spacers for the front. And we're going to grab our bolt, the new bolt from the Womit Tech packaging, swing the frame sliders over, and very carefully by hand, catch a few threads, just like we did on the rear. And at this point, I feel pretty comfortable that I've caught threads and I'm not cross-threaded. So very gently, little by little, I will begin tightening down front and rear at an even pace. The front may have a little bit more resistance because that's going into the motor. Whereas on the rear, it's just going into the bracket. So don't be alarmed. If you feel any extreme tension, back out. Make sure you're not cross threading. Now that I know both are bottomed out by hand tool, I'm going to grab our torque wrench. It's already set to 45 from this larger one. I'm going to use that on the rear. However, on the front, we will tighten this down to 60 Newton meters. So 45 on the rear. And then we're going to go to 60 Newton meters on the front. Again, these are the manufacturer recommended torque specs. And this side is complete. And now we can head on over to the left side of the bike and finish this installation. Now that we're on the other side of the bike, we can begin following the same process and removing this rear bracket. Push all that hardware and the bracket to the side, and we can go ahead and grab the included Womit Tech one. It's going to sit in this orientation with this cut inside facing the front of the bike. We'll grab our two smaller bolts and begin hand threading it with the tool, making sure we're not cross threading yet again. Repeating this step for all the hardware. Leaving it loose gives it some wiggle room so we can make adjustments if needed. And now the main engine one. Again, do everything by hand. I cannot stress that enough. All right, this is bottomed out. We can go ahead and torque that down at this time. And again, same torque specs as before, 25, 25, and 45. So the two smaller bolts, they will be torqued down to 25 Newton meters. Let's go ahead and adjust our torque wrench. The larger one, we're gonna to torque down to 45 Newton meters.
Now, as before, we're going to grab our new frame slider puck and the bracket, along with the two countersunk screws. Align them, begin by hand. Grab our five millimeter tool, bottom it out, go a quarter of a turn, half of a turn past that, good to go. Now we can see kind of how this is going to align. We do need to remove that front engine bolt. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and grab the Womit Tech bolt along with the spacer that is not tapered. Feed the bolt through. We're using the OEM washer. Begin threading by hand. Once you get a few threads in, you feel confident. Rest this down. Grab the other bolt. At this point, this is the shorter bolt and the longer tapered spacer. Follow the same steps, get a few threads in by hand or with your hand tool. Try and bottom out. Perfect, and now we can go ahead and torque these down. The rear will be torqued down to 45 Newton meters, same as the lower rear bracket bolt. Perfect, and the front will be torqued down to 60 Newton meters. And with that, this installation is now complete for our Evos frame sliders on the all new 2022 Yamaha XSR 900. Not only do they look good, but they do the most important job of providing crash protection in the event of a crash. These are designed and meant to minimize the damage taken on in the event that you do drop your bike or go down. So if you wanna check these out, or if you're interested in our other frame sliders, be sure to check out our other video. Otherwise, you can hit the link in the description of our video. Stop by our website, tstindustries.com to check these out, along with any other part we may have for this XSR 900 or any other bikes sitting in your garage. As always, if you have questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comment field below. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on to stay up to date with all the new and exciting things we are doing here at the shop. And lastly, stop by our social media pages if you haven't already, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all username TST Industries. This has been Mark from TST Industries. Catch you guys next time.